So what we're gonna do here is create some ginger seedlings. Guten gardening, everybody. Well, you know, I love a good garden experiment. And this one has got me really interested to see what the results might be. We've got some store-bought ginger here that sprouted for us. And I'm gonna talk about all of that here in a second. But we're gonna be bold enough here in Zone 5 Wisconsin to try to grow a plant that's typically meant for Zones 8 to 10, a tropical plant that I think we can grow in some containers here indoors. For the last day or so, we've actually had this ginger inside this gallon bag with the idea being that we would keep some of the moisture in. We didn't do anything to this except for allow it to stay in the bag it came in. And the result was some of the nicest ginger we've ever seen in terms of ginger that has sprouted. And quite honestly, we've been thinking about growing ginger for some time and we've actually planted some in our green stalk, but that was kind of shriveled up. It didn't really look as nice as this. This is definitely the best we've seen. So what's our inspiration or our motivation to try to grow ginger here in Zone 5 Wisconsin? Well, I'll tell you that the availability and the price are not that great in our area for organic ginger. There's plenty of ginger that's not organic, but that's not something we use. And we actually use ginger quite often in different recipes that we use around the house and especially in making ginger tea. If you've never had ginger tea before, I highly recommend it. We usually drink it if we're feeling a little bit nauseous, a stomach ache, something like that. It calms everything down. You know, ginger has a ton of benefits and we want to take advantage of those and grow our own. I've also read that the leaves and the stems of the ginger can be used as seasoning as well. So then we're talking about using more of the plant than you would normally get to use if you're buying it from the store. Now, as I said, we've never grown this before, so what does that mean? That means we look to the experts to get their suggestions on how to grow this plant best, especially in our colder climate area. And we're gonna use those tips and follow those tips and make modifications as necessary as we see how this is gonna to continue to grow. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got on each of these pieces of our ginger. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here on our ginger. You see, we actually bought this, left it in its packaging, which was a, a paper tray covered in plastic. We left it in there for a couple of weeks and then we came and looked at it and we saw all this growth on here. Of course, when you normally buy ginger, you don't see any of these nodes popping out at all, any of these stems or the beginnings of stems. But after a time, if you don't do anything with it, just like you'd see with potatoes, you're gonna start to see some sprouting. And what we have sprouting here, this is super cool. You see these roots right here? These are roots that are starting out there. They're looking for something to dive into, develop into, and then we have one of our stems starting out. You can see it's a nice green color here. It's a really good sign. Again, these are nice and healthy. My reading says that this stem could grow anywhere from two to three feet in height. And so that's something we've got to take into account. But what I want to do now is I'm going to plant this entire piece. Again, I've done lots of reading because we're not experts at this in any stretch of the imagination. And I've read that you could basically take something that's half this size, so I could break this apart and grow it. But for now, we're gonna leave this together and we're going to plant this entire piece, which means we have a total of five pieces of ginger that we can plant. They're all different sizes here. It'd be really interesting to see how they develop. This is the one that has the longest shoot so far. Take a look at that. And I can already see here, and it's only been a couple of days, but these roots, the ends of them are getting a little bit black. So we wanna get these planted as quickly as possible in our indoor growing area. Now at the beginning of the video, I talked about how we'd be pushing boundaries because we're growing this in zone five. This could be an eight to 10 month crop. I mean, it takes a while for it to fully mature, though we may get some early production as quickly as about four months in. Again, that's all brand new to us, but we can't start this outside. We can't leave it outside over the winter because once the temperatures hit around 32 degrees, it's going to die and it's probably going to rot. And once the soil temps drop below about 65 degrees, and this is just what we've read so far, 
It sounds like that it starts to go dormant. It will stop actually continuing to grow. All right, I'm gonna interrupt this video for our next giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening, gardening gift giving. All right, folks, the largest number of people so far in one of our giveaways, and you picked a great one to be a part of because we're giving away two items today. I really think you're gonna like today's prizes. We've got a 12 pack seed starter tray kit with Humidity Dome, perfect for starting up your seeds. And we have this durable heating pad that's gonna help you with that seed starting as well. So two giveaways in one, let's go ahead and see who the winner is. Well, I'm super excited to see who today's winner is. This is day number 14, so still more to go. Our winner today is, I want to believe. Well, I hope you believe that you could be one of our winners. That's fantastic. Congratulations, I want to believe. Now listen, go ahead and congratulate the winner in the comments, but don't say their name so they can be surprised whenever they find out they won. And I want to believe, go ahead, when you see you've won, leave us a comment and we'll be in touch to let you know how we can get this shipped out to you as quickly as possible. Remember, if you wanna be entered into our next giveaway, leave a comment on this video or one of our community posts between now and the next video, and you'll be entered in to win. Let's go ahead and get back to our video. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna be creating ginger seedlings. What I mean by that is, we're going to be starting these off in containers that are smaller than we necessarily are going to have them in when all is said and done but that gives them a nice good start and we can always transplant them. And the reason we're doing that is because this is an experiment, we don't know how well each of these is gonna perform. It's highly possible that some of these grow really well and others don't. And so I don't wanna waste space on something that's not productive. It's kind of like what we're doing with some of our potatoes where we're creating potato seedlings. So we can see just how healthy those potatoes are gonna be. Well, we're doing the same thing with this and then we'll transplant later on. I'm gonna start with the mix that I'm using. This is just a nice lightweight mix that has a decent amount of peat moss in it. And actually peat moss is probably a decent base because our understanding is that ginger likes something between a five and a half to six and a half pH, so a little bit lower. Peat moss has some of that lower pH, but we've also added in some cocoa cure and a little bit of worm castings as well to bring that pH up a little bit from where the peat moss would be. And so this should be a pretty good mix and a well draining mix because of the perlite we've also added. So that this is gonna be something that doesn't keep our ginger soggy. Now, as far as growing styles for the ginger, I can tell you that they typically grow shallow rather than deep. And so putting them about an inch deep, you don't really need a massive deep pot. More than anything, you need a wider pot. And this isn't necessarily ideal. This is about an eight inch pot right here, but planting it about an inch deep, maybe an inch and a half deep in this pot should get us a nice start in terms of what it is that we're trying to develop here as far as seedlings go. Again, we may have to transplant this a little bit later in the season, but I think this will be a good start for us. So using this smaller pot, again, will just enable us to get a good start and make sure that this is actually going to grow well. And what I'm doing when I'm planting this in here is if I have any of these sprouts that are actually shooting up with these stems, I'm putting the stem facing upwards. So again, about an inch, inch and a half in, and I'm actually gonna cover this up with more of this same potting mix, just like so. The other place where we're gonna plant this ginger is in our raised bed. Now, all of these are gonna be in our grow tent under our best lights, our more powerful lights, so we can see what that does. My research indicates that these can handle full sun, especially in the cooler climates. If you're in the heat, you're supposed to potentially plant these in the shade more so, so that they don't get overwhelmed by the heat. But these I'm gonna plant about every eight inches apart or so, which is what you're supposed to do if you have more space than what we're necessarily growing in, you know, in our other containers. Again, about an inch deep. Draw my line here so I can see what I've planted and where. And now we've got our ginger laid out in here. I'm gonna give these a little bit of a watering to get started here. And then we're gonna leave them alone for a little while. And the primary lights that we're using are our Mars Hydro and our 2000 watt light. So these two are some of our most powerful and they're the ones that are right above 
what we're growing here for our ginger. Now, as far as fertilizer goes, our reading suggests we need to let the plant establish itself first for a while, grow for a little while before we come in and add any kind of fertilizer. Again, we have those really nice, healthy pieces, so they have plenty of energy in there to get going. And we'll come in and we'll deal with the fertilizer later. We'll establish it again and we'll make any changes we need to as we see this starting to grow. We'll transplant, we'll move around once we see just how healthy these plants are gonna be. Well, what we've got here is another exciting gardening experiment just getting started, another challenge for our zone five growing area. You know, in four or five months, as the weather starts to get warmer, if we want to, we could potentially even transplant these or move them outdoors and really take advantage once the weather gets nice and warm. Who knows? I mean, that's part of the fun of this experiment. Are we gonna harvest green ginger? That's that early ginger. Are we gonna try to get this really nice and big? What is the end result gonna be? What can we eat from it? All of that we're gonna be able to answer over the next couple of months. And another positive potential outcome of this experiment is once more removing another thing from our checklist of things that we're still dependent on the grocery store for. Anytime you can remove something from that, you're in a much better space. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed today's video. Congratulations once again to our winner. If you did enjoy today's video, if you're excited for this experiment, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.